Welcome to the second video presentation on the frequency domain. Um, in the first presentation we took a close look at sinusoidal waveforms um, and we showed that sinusoidal waveforms when viewed in the frequency domain appear as single spikes. Um, now the reason why we focused on, single, or on, on sinusoids was because a French mathematician called Jean-Baptiste Fourier showed that every signal can be represented as a sum of sinusoids. Um, so he proved this theory mathematically. Um, so the hope of this presentation is just try to reinforce that concept that every signal can be represented as a sum of sinusoids. Okay. So I put together a, a MATLAB demonstration um, which will hopefully make that theory a little bit clearer, at least at a conceptual level. It doesn't go through any of the mathematics. Um, so I've put together three example signals that I'm going to use to show the, 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 the theory in, in practice. So here we have uh, an example signal and um, we haven't specified the time, it doesn't really matter what time it is, um, but it changes over time and it's a little bit more complicated than a single sinusoid. And um, I'm going to hit the space bar on my keyboard and something will happen. You will see a, a sinusoid appear on the lower plot here and also on the upper one. Okay, so just hit the space bar and we have this green uh, sinusoid shown on the lower plot and it up in the upper plot we have the, this red sinusoid which is the same as the green one down below. And I'm going to hit the space bar again now and you will see a second sinusoid appear in the lower plot. So we, now we see two, two sinusoids in the lower plot, a black one and a green one. And the red waveform up here, a red signal, is the sum of these two sinusoids. So when we add these two sinusoids together, you would reproduce this, or you would produce this um, red waveform here. Okay? And you can see that the red waveform is moving towards the, the shape of the blue one and the blue one is of course my original signal. Um, and I'm going to hit the space bar again, you'll see a third sinusoid appear down the lower plot. So now we have three sinusoids down the lower plot. If they were added together, they would reproduce, or they, sorry, when those three sinusoids are added together, they produce the red signal up above. And you can see that the red signal is very close to being um, equal to the blue signal. Okay. So I'm just going to hit the um, spacebar one more time. We'll see a, th a fourth sinusoid being introduced. Um, now this doesn't look like a sinusoid, but if I zoom in, I might get a better appreciation of its shape. So you can see there that that is in fact a sinusoidal in shape. It's just that we're we zoomed out so far; it's hard to see the amplitude changes. Um, but now we have four sinusoids in the lower plot, and the red one is the sum of those four sinusoids. And you can see that it exactly matches the original signal. Um, you can, in fact, you can no longer see the original signal because they're overlaid perfectly. Now, I have to say, this, this example that I've used here is a, a, a toy example, because I actually created the, the original uh, signal, the blue one, I created that blue signal by adding four sinusoids together, so um, it makes sense that four sinusoids are required to reproduce it. But in my second example, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use a, a real speech signal. Um, don't worry about this error; um, it's just the way I'm quitting my uh, demonstration. Not very elegant, but we'll do. Um, so my second demonstration, I use a real speech signal, and it's it's a recording of my speech signal, and it's um, it's got three periods of a uh, of sound I'm producing. It's about fifty or sixty milliseconds long, roughly. So it's quite a short speech signal, but this theory, Fourier's theory, that every signal can be represented as a sum of sinusoids, um, that holds no matter what the length of the or duration of the signal is. Um, but, okay, so this blue signal is going to be my original signal, which I want to reproduce by adding sinusoids together. When I hit the space bar, you'll see a, a, a new sinusoid appearing down the bottom. There we go. 
So in this case, the, the red is equal to the green signal down here, which is a, the green signal being a sinusoid. Hit the spacebar again, we'll see a second sinusoid introduced. So now we've got a red, or sorry, we've got a black and green uh, sinusoids down below. They're a slightly different frequency, but when they're added together, they produce this red signal up above. And every time I hit the spacebar, you'll see a third, well, another sinusoid being introduced. Um, so just keep an eye on this number up here, and that'll show you how many sinusoids I'm adding together. So there's the three, and the red signal again is the sum of all these sinusoids down below. And you can see as the number of sinusoids increases, I get a, 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 a closer approximation of the, the original blue signal. And I can keep on adding sinusoids together. And it can take many, many sinusoids to reproduce a, a signal perfectly but it can be done. So we have 26 sinusoids there now, 27. Um, so 27 sinusoids down here, when those 27 sinusoids are added together, they produce this red waveform, which is very close to the blue. Now I could keep going and eventually I would actually get it perfectly, but it might take a few hundred. So I'm just going to quit that, because I think we've shown enough. Um, I'll just quit that. And we'll do a third demonstration. And in this third demonstration, I'm showing a signal that has very sudden changes in it. So this is a square wave signal. And this square wave signal has very sudden changes in it. And Jean-Baptiste Fourier had a lot of difficulty when he started, um, uh, when he tried to prove his theory to other mathematicians. They, they had difficulty, or they had issue with how would sinusoids represent these sudden changes. Um, and the, the thing is, they can handle it quite well. They just require lots of sinusoids. So I'm just going to hit the spacebar again, and we'll see a, 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 a first sinusoid. Okay, so there's one sinusoid. Hit the spacebar again, we see a second. So these two sinusoids here, the black and the green, added together will produce the red. And keep an eye on this number here, that shows how many sinusoids I'm adding together. But as I add more and more sinusoids together, you can see that all the sinusoids, when added together, start to closely match the original blue signal. Now, again, I might will need lots of sinusoids to to get close to the square wave, but you can see even at 31, 32, 33, we're getting very, very close. Now, again, we might need a few, uh, well, a good few sinusoids in order to match it exactly. But the theory holds. The theory is that adding sinusoids together um, can reproduce any signal. Okay. So that's the demonstration which shows that, uh, well, demonstrates Fourier's theory really. Um, we haven't got into any of the mathematics. We will do so at some stage, but I'm just going to try to put that off for as long as possible. Um, it's more important now at this stage that you have a good conceptual understanding about uh, what Fourier theories is what Fourier's theory is about, um, because really, when we look at the frequency content of a signal, um, what we're seeing is well, it tells us what sinusoids are present in a signal, and if we added those sinusoids that are present in the signal together, we would reproduce the original signal. Okay, so thank you for your attention. I'll see you in the next presentation.